Hi, I'm Mary. I am working in the garden this summer um, and I'm doing your dispatch this week. I thought I'd start with a quick introduction. So um, I graduated from UPA and I'm currently in seminary at Emory. I chose to work and learn in the garden here this summer um, because I think that this work can touch on a lot of human injustice ranging from immigration and how our food is grown to racial and economic disparities and who can access certain kinds of food and our lands, but also has something deeply theological at stake about how we are in relationship with a creation that we call abundant and good, including all its inhabitants and how we experience intimacy with God through God's creation. So that is kind of why I am here, and my dispatch springs from this question. What is your relationship with creation? After a short reflection and psalm, I'm going to enter a practice that's loosely based on the Ignatian examine. The examine is a practice that's used to reflect on the day, on ourselves and our relationship to others and to God through it especially in this moment where we're experiencing a lot of grief and trauma and pain. And we're kind of going through transitions that I think for many of us, some growing pains of relearning what we thought we understood. Being able to step back and reflect can be really helpful and centering. The Psalm 104, which tells through poetry the creation story and models a new way for us to be in relationship with creation. It extols the glory in creation, the power of God in knowing and providing for it, and the reality of death and recreation again. The psalmist also asks that sinners be wiped clean and that the wicked be no more. And we today see wickedness. We don't always live in ways that allow the earth to be abundant for everyone and everything. A part of our relationship is to grieve lost habitats and lives and communities. And a part is the responsibility to participate, to turn and wipe clean the wickedness. But the psalm leads us away from despair because after naming sin and wickedness, it returns to praise. The abundance of God, the goodness and creation, the beauty of the earth don't stop amidst their violence. Goodness and healing are present, and some restoration might be possible. So without further ado, um, Psalm 104, starting at verse 24. Lord, you have done so many things. You made them all so wisely. The earth is full of your creations. And then there's the sea wide and deep with countless creatures, living things both large and small. There go the ships on it, and Leviathan, which you made, plays in it. All your creations wait for you to give them their food on time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled completely full. But when you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you let loose your breath, they are created and you make the surface of the ground brand new again. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all the Lord has made. The Lord has only to look at the earth and it shakes. God just touches the mountains and they erupt in smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing my praises to God while I'm still alive. Let my praise be pleasing to God. I'm rejoicing in the Lord. Let sinners be wiped clean from the earth. Let the wicked be no more. But let my whole being praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
My favorite part of this psalm is the Leviathan, a figure in the Hebrew Bible that represents the chaotic depths from which the world emerged, an unknown and terrifying force upon the waters. And as you heard in the eyes of God, the Leviathan is just the little sea being, a beloved pet dragon at play, a source of wonder and joy. The Leviathan for me is a reminder that there are parts of the world that we cannot understand or tame or control with all our human power and skill. We can only look upon them and sit in awe. So I ask again, what relationship do you have with creation? And I encourage you to sit, maybe go outside and reflect. Breathe deeply. Ask, what do I smell? Hear, what do I sense? Who do I share this space with? What troubles me? What inspires wonder in the world around me? Where do I see God? What feelings am I having here? Who is creation calling me to be? So feel free to take your time to continue taking deep breaths, resting in the presence of your feelings, of creation, of God, of all the beings around you.